Hi, I'm Brendan Hoffels, owner of Beast Fitness in Potsdam, New York. In uh, March of 2018, I broke the United States national actual record by lifting 375 pounds in the men's 275 weight class. And today I want to talk about how to lift and clean and press an axle, which I've got right behind me. This is a little axle that a welder made. It's hollow, doesn't spin, it's light. It's maybe 10 kilograms, so we just call it uh, 20 pounds. But before I talk about the axle, I want to talk about how to clean and press a bar because there's a, it's a lot, I think it's a lot simpler. Um, and there's a lot of carryover. So I've got a bar over here on the ground. I put some weight on it because it's a little easier for me to move and get in good positions because uh, I'm a little stiff and muscly. And so getting into good positions is, I need that little bit of weight to get some torque off of. Um, I'm assuming, because you're watching this video, you're into strongman, you do deadlifts, you do squats, you do front squats, you put weight overhead, you do upper back work, you do rows. If you don't do a lot of that stuff, if you're not very experienced with a lot of stuff, I wouldn't worry about the axle yet. I would spend some time work on those um, simple big compound movements. And when you've got, gotten a little more uh, technically proficient and stronger to come back because um, those are just gonna build a good base and make this a lot easier. So like I said, I wanna talk about the bar before I go to the axle. And we're just gonna talk about a hand clean and a press, whether it's a trick press, push press, push jerk, split jerk, squat jerk, <laughs> all the same principles are going to apply. So the big thing with our, our cleans, we need that good hip hinge and that big hip extension along with this big shrug. Uh, oh, I have a practice bar over here. Very, very heavy practice bar. Right? Make sure we're braced, we're set in our shoulders, our lats are flared, they're engaged, drive the hips back, bend at the knees. Right, that's our setup for a hand clean. Hips drive through the bar explosively. We come on our toes, we get a big shrug. That's really the big, well, one of two big things that we need for the axle is the hip extension and the shrug. When we get to the axle, we're going to be going on a switch grip. And what happens a lot when people don't have a good hip extension, and more importantly, that big shrug, they do this. They curl it. A few months, about six months before I broke the national record, I set a New York State record, and the guy who went before me curled 355 pounds, and his bicep popped. I got the video, it's pretty cool, you can see the bicep kind of. Anyway, so this is really important. Take some time, learn how to do hand cleans. Flats, engage, core braced, hips back, big hips to the bar. We're gonna shrug, pull up, and we get a quick turnover. Boom. Elbows up quick. Now, where should we press from? This position, not a great pressing position. Let's take a look. Well, in this front rack, particularly for me, my shoulders are forward. So when I go to press, look where I'm going to press. Pressing out. Nice way to illustrate this is getting a little tension in there. Come into the front rack and press up. And naturally, I want to press out. So what I'm going to have to do is either pull my shoulder back as I press, or I'm going to do one of these. And with 375 pounds, those things are really hard. So the best thing to do, we're in a front rack position, we can adjust to a pressing position. We want to be in a position where the shoulder is more neutral. We can create some torque in our shoulder via external rotation. And now, not only do I want to press
press up, but the bar naturally will just kind of sit behind me. I don't have to pull the bar back. I don't have to chicken bob and try and push my head through. It just locks into position. So when I go to catch this bar in the clean, I'm going to do a quick adjustment to get in that press position. So from here, the front rack, what I do, using external rotation in the shoulders, I drop the elbows, I flare the lats. Boom. I'm straight up and down. Tension in my upper back. When I go to press, I want to press up. In the front rack, I want to press out. The more efficient the technique, the easier it is to lift the weight. Final thought on pressing. We want to maintain that torque in our shoulders. So a lot of times, I will continue to cue external rotation like I'm trying to get to my palms to face in or my thumbs back. This keeps the lats flared. It also helps me press straight up and just end up in a good position. Especially when I do a split jerk, which is what I did to put 375 overhead. Getting in this position is stable. Right? Coming forward. I'm going to have to do something weird like that, or I'm going to have to scramble forward, which I also had to do, but it was really heavy, so these, th these things happen. Um, let's talk about jerks real quick. Uh, the way I teach it, it's a push press with a little pizzazz, whether it's a push jerk, split jerk, squat jerk. The movement starts the same. You've got a dip, you've got a drive, and a press. That explosive drive goes into the press. The difference is you have an extra piece. As we're pressing up, we squat down. So I'm not just throwing the bar up. I'm not just dropping under the bar. I'm actively pressing and I'm actively dropping under the bar. Push press. Push jerk, split jerk. They all start the same way. I all have the same press. Boring stuff's done. Let's get to the fun stuff, the axle. Like I said, this is a very light axle. It's maybe 20 or 22 pounds. It's the axle I trained on, it's, it's the axle I trained on, it's the only one I have, well I have a two and a half inch axle, but this is the one I typically use when I'm using the axle. Um, so you don't need anything fancy, you just need some two inch pipe. Again, I'm going to throw a little weight on, because it helps me get in position. You'll see. So, a clean and jerk, we'll call it two steps, a clean and a jerk, or a clean and press. With the axle, it's a continental, which is typically two or more steps um, to the stomach, to the shoulders, and then whatever type of press we're doing. Set up, just like you would for a clean or a deadlift, we're going to talk about the switch grip because we want to lift more weight than the other guy and it won't be grip limiting. So, setup's the same, hip extension's the same, shrug is the same. It doesn't matter that I've got a switch grip. I will know, even if you're really good at shrugging, you're going to load up this guy a little bit more than this guy. And if you do enough of these, you'll typically feel a little more sore in that bicep. So we do want to make sure we've got this good shrug. I'm going to clean the bar up to the top of my abdomen. Do a quick switch. Pop it up in my shoulders. Try not to hit your chin. Where on our abdomen are we aiming? Well, let's make myself fat. 
Nice food, baby. The top of my core is right here. If I'm braced, this is solid. If I have a low belt, it's going to do this, which makes my shelf even bigger. And I can get the bar right here. It's important to note the axle is not just magically resting there. I am actively working on holding that axle in place. Not just resting on my abdomen, I'm not just leaning back. I am using my lats and my upper back to row and hold that axle in place. And if you can do this, doesn't matter if you got a big belly or no belly, you're gonna be able to get that bar in a good position with just enough lean back, as long as you have a good brace and a good row pulling the bar into your body. What does this look like? So strong, big hips, shrug up, right? Core's brace, I'm pulling the bar in. I'm gonna be very quick, right? If you need to here, you can even get a little push with the legs, right? But as soon as I let go of that bar, it's gonna to wanna to drop. So that little pop, even when I go to switch, creates a little upward momentum on the bar. There's an instant where the bar goes up and hits a peak. At that instant, the bar is weightless, and then it drops. Physics, look it up. If you're really coordinated and well practiced with this, and it's light enough, you can clean and switch at the same time. Now, typically going for a max, you can't. So it's best to practice step by step. before getting too fancy. So, I've got the good hip extension, the big shrug, I'm on my belly, I've switched, core's braced, lats are strong, just a little bit of a lean. How do I get it onto my shoulders? Well, here's the way I do not like to do it. I find it's significantly harder Personally, it doesn't work for me. We're going to utilize that hip extension again, just like we would for a clean or a press. And we're going to explode up through our legs, through our hips, give the bar upward momentum, and quickly turn it over. Whether you land in a front rack position or a pressing position, doesn't matter. Typically, with the axle, I just end up in a pressing position. Um, my lats are already flared. I just kind of have to rotate, right? Boom. That's it. That's the. That's it. Maybe you get a little shrug, but this is really all the movement is. And the power is going to come from our hips, our legs, our lower half. If we're not in a good pressing position, you can adjust. And again, use your legs and your hips. Just a quick little pop. The weight pops up. Quick adjustment. It settles into position. And once it's here, we already know what to do. Drive up. The whole movement together. Good setup. Lats tight, core braced. We're gonna have a big hip extension and a shrug up to my abdomen. I'm still braced, I'm pulling the bar in tight with my upper back, little leg drive and switch. I'm still tense, big leg drive, big hip drive, and turn over. Nailed it. And that's how you clean a pressing axle. Once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. Um, if you've never done an axle before, it's gonna be different than a bar. I think when I learned how to do the axle, I had maybe a 
275 clean and jerk on the bar, but um, I didn't have the technique to get above to 225. So start light, 60%, get some reps in, get some practice in, build week to week, and, uh, and you'll get the hang of it. Enjoy.